On this episode of CETV, wild food expert Sonny Savage comes to my place. I show Sonny around my neighborhood, and she shows me a lot of the wild foods growing abundantly in only walking distance from my house. She also shows us her new Savage Kitchen wild food app. And with the help of some Hawaiian magic, we're able to drop the first pin on Hawaii Island. Sunny also shows us the food products she makes from five wild invasive plants here in Hawaii. And finally, we go to a local watering hole where a willing mixologist uses these food products in our drinks. Stay tuned. Actually, do you know where we can find some? I do. Come on. Right, let's do it. And that, my dear viewers, is how this epic day began. A day wild food rock star Sunny Savage would show me the wild foods growing right in my neighborhood. And we didn't have to go far before she found some. So check this out. Yeah. You have a delicious wild food growing right outside your spot here. Right in my front yard. Right in your front yard. Wow. That's this cool. is called Ivy Gourd. Okay. And um, it's a kind of a tropical viney plant. You can see how it's just crawling all over this um, plant here, the shrub. Yeah. And so you're going to see it where it, it trails up. You can also find it on the ground. Sometimes it'll crawl on the ground, but it really likes to crawl up. Okay. And you can eat the leaves. Wow. So it's like a it seems like it's not like raw, you'd like cook this or something. Yeah, right? so it has these kind of thicker leathery leaves yeah. and I like to saute them, steam them, mm, okay. um, just kind of add them to whatever you're cooking yeah. in your soups, in your sautés and uh, I think they're absolutely delicious. It's a real mild flavor. They don't have a strong flavor one way or another. Right on. And, um, one of the ways that you can learn to identify them is by um, that leatheriness, like we said. Okay. Um, and then they have kind of a heart shape, but it's a, it's got some angular. It's like an angular heart, okay. right? You got these here, and then you also have these little points where it comes to all these different points. It's not a smooth edge. Um, also, the flower um, here. We've got a flower. Okay. That's a beauty there, a cucurbit. And that's part, of the, that's part of the same plant. This is part of the same plant. So here you get these tendrils, and these are what crawl all over and um, where the plant keeps growing. You have the little cakey, the little baby um, leaves starting there. And we don't have any fruits right now, but the fruits are typically about that long. Okay. And then they start off green, and then they ripen to a bright red. And they are not edible. Okay. Yeah, don't don't eat those. <laughs> but the leaves are. But the leaves are totally edible. Which they, brings up a great point. Yeah. Right? Which is when you're going to harvest or forage wild foods, identification is super important. Identification is key. I mean, yeah. you really need to be confident that you're willing to put something into your body and, and not get sick. Yes. And, you know, you have to respect yourself enough and you have to respect the plant because it's not their fault if you're not identifying. So you always want to have three key features that you're looking for for your identification. Okay. So we've got that angular shaped kind of heart leaf. Yep. We've got the little points. It's not a smooth edge. Okay. And then another one that I didn't tell you was that it oftentimes has these little spots on it. So it almost looks like these little kind of constellations that form on the, the surface of the leaf. Um, so it's a really cool thing to point out because we have a look-alike plant right here. That's exactly what we were going yeah, to Yeah. So this looks a lot like, I would probably go out and pick this one because it has a white flower right? and a heart-shaped leaf, but it's different. Right, that's different. So you can see the... Um, the flowers are different, but very, very similar. Right. Um, the leaves on this one, again, we've got that angular shape, whereas this one, this little viney That's sweetheart, like has a, heart. the heart shape. Right. And it's smooth all the way around, as where as these little points here. And then this one has kind of some 
some blemishes on it, but this one has these very noticeable spots that are on like every single leaf that you're gonna find. So what you're saying is this is edible and this is not And this is not, not edible. This so, is Coccinia grandis. Mm -hmm. Ivy gourd, and over on my island, on Maui, we don't actually have ivy gourd. Okay, great. Um, Oahu is covered in this stuff. Wow. This is a hugely, widely available wild food on Oahu. Okay. And I'm not totally sure about Kauai. I'm excited to go check them out soon and, and see what I find. But um, yeah, so don't get these two confused. And there's actually a lot of viney plants that have kind of this heart-shaped leaf. So you're looking for this angular thing going on and the dots and the fruits. The fruits are a real telltale thing. A lot of times you'll notice these white flowers as, as you're driving by or hiking by somewhere. Okay. So yeah, cool. right Ivy out. Guard, Thank right you. in your own front yard. So we got our greens. We got our greens. <laughs> So, Sonny, I guess you're not here just to find me free food, right? <laughs> well, I always want to help a brother out. Oh, thank you so much. But, yeah. but no. Like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? And, dude, I am creating this statewide app. It's okay. a mapping program to help you find five edible invasive plants. So over all the Hawaiian islands. Yeah, and the globe, really. Wherever you find them, you can drop pins and get recipes and video tutorials and quizzes to help with identification. We would learn more about the app as the day progressed, but I really wanted to bring Sunny to one of my favorite beach access spots to see if there was any food there. So. Um, you're here in Kona, and I know you're looking around all the Hawaiian Islands, but this is one of my favorite spots. Yay! It's called Alakala, and it's beach, public beach access. And there's some things here that are probably edible, maybe even invasive, right? Go check it out. Yeah, we can totally check it out. And there's always these, these five invasives that are going to be part of the app. But, um, you know, of course, Hawaii is full of lots of different wild foods. And so if people are interested in learning more, they can subscribe to this monthly missive. And that's where, like, if you, if you want to go deep, you can get monthly newsletters that um, give recipes on different wild foods, not just the five. So here we've got um, Chinese violet, and this one, you would never eat it how it looks right now. I mean, this is all dried out, nothing choice, but it really helps with that identification. The flowers can be either purple or white, and um, you would eat the young leaves when they're still shiny. And you would just kind of take that new growth, just kind of pick off the new, kind of the ends of the new growth and uh, cook it. Um, yeah, Chinese violet, Azastasia genentia. This is that one I was telling you about, um, Natal plum. Okay. And it's not one of the five invasives that I'm focusing on in the app, but it is in my book. Oh, cool. Um, Natal plum, um, Carissa macrocarpa. It originates from South Africa and it gets these wonderful little fruits. Yeah. Um, hmm. And you can eat those raw. They have a bunch of white latex. You can eat the seeds as well. They won't hurt you. Um, and yeah, the real telltale thing is they have these uh, double spines. Is that it right there? Yeah. Yeah. The tall plum. Nice. And right over here, we've got a whole entire hedge of ivy gourd again. I mean, this is just covering this, this shrub here. So this is a great food source. Basically, you could have greens for the rest of, you rest could, of the year. Right? You could have greens for the rest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, depending on how much you eat, of course. Right, but, right. Uh, yeah. you know, a nice uh, one half cup of, of cooked greens every day I think is uh, pretty reasonable from this patch. And they're growing right by the seat, which is really nice too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so kind of a nice environment to go harvest your greens. Uh, it is a greens. nice environment. It's beautiful out here. Free greens. For forget kale. Who's kale? What's kale? Okay, we are looking for the plants so we can drop the first pin of the Savage Kitchen app here on the Big Island. Come on. Maya Angelou said, My mission in life is not merely to survive but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. 
This quote really captures Sunny for me, as she has a strong passion for wild foods, which is definitely infectious. But she goes about her passion with a real compassion for nature, with a humor and a style that make it fun to watch. And if you're lucky, like we were on this day, to be a part of. And Sunny really has made it her mission to share her passion for wild foods and develop tools so people can learn, forage, and essentially enjoy the delicious and medicinal bounty that's growing around us. So we didn't find one of the invasives here to drop our first pin, but I did want you to bring want to bring you to one of my favorite spots on the beach access points on the Lee Drive, and that's this beautiful saltwater pool here. This is amazing. Isn't this pretty cool? Yeah, this is really, really cool. There's great access, and what a unique little zone. There's so many great little beach access points that are all their, each their own little thing along the beach. And yeah, come up. and you know, even though we didn't find the five invasives that I'm focusing on in the app, there's plenty of wild food around here. There I mean, is. we have all that Natal plum, and there's a lot of kiave, and you know, we were seeing the ivy gourd, and so there's there's stuff around. And you're gonna drop the pin somewhere along. I the way. am. I am heading out. I'm gonna circumnavigate the Big Island and um, go drop a bunch of pins, and it'll be ready for folks to. Check and the out. other thing you have to do is you have to try to get people to use these invasive foods, yeah. right? in everyday sort of drinks and food and you've done some of that with your book but you're also going to restaurants and talking to chefs about working into their recipes right yeah yeah we're including a lot of recipes in the app to get people excited like okay now i know what this is what in the heck am i going to do with it exactly so yeah bridging that gap and you know these are new flavors for a lot of folks it's really introducing new genetic material into your body yeah so. And that's good, too. And that's one of the reasons wild foods are good for you, right? Because it's something that's different and it adds to the diversity of the things you're eating. Bumps right? up your biodiversity and that, you know, you are what you eat in the sense where you're getting all of these different um, energies, different nutrients, different hormones that the plants produce, different enzymes. You know, it's this whole package. Um, and, and you get the experience, you get the fun of going out and harvesting them. It's a blast, yeah. yeah. Especially when you can find like a lifetime supply of greens right on the <laughs> yeah. beach that you love, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> cool, so you're gonna show us some of the plants. We're gonna, you're gonna show us some of the five you brought, you had them, right? I have some yeah. um, products, you know, some, yeah. some food items. Okay, cool. So, yeah. What do we got there? We got, we got Sun Records, Do What I Do by Slim Rose. Thank you for coming to the Big Island and coming into my house. Yeah. And, uh, you're going to show us a little bit about the five st stuff you produce from the five invasives. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about your history. Mm -hmm. um, besides the book, which we've seen, how did you get into this in the first place? That's the first question. Well, I had been living in Antarctica for a year. I was 18 years old, turned 19 there, wow. and eating. How did you get to Antarctica? I guess that, uh, oh, that's, that's, golly. That's a long, that's a longer that's story. That's another story. Okay. Um, All right, let's just start. You're I have Antarctica. an adventurous spirit. Let's okay. say that <laughs> I was looking for adventure. That's a great. great yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's... eating canned and frozen food I at every that. meal, and I really realized. Like, okay, my parents actually fed me like 
real food and I was missing that. Yes. And so when I came home from that adventure, my mom had started some herbal medicine courses online. And I started to do the work with her and get excited about it. And I remember opening one of her books and reading that some of the medicinal plants were also edibles. And it was just like this, you know, moment of my life. My my whole reality changed. It was like the top of my head blew off and I was just like, oh my gosh, like I was really pissed, like nobody had ever told me this before. Right, and yeah, yeah. So you can any eat these things you too. can eat oh these things. God. And it's really been my passion ever since I was nineteen. You and know, you've had step a by TV step. Show, yeah. Your own T V show, you had a, did a TED talk, right? I oh. did, yeah. And I taught at a college, uh, with traditional food ways and wild foods and I've, uh, you know, been like a paid person at the state parks, taking thousands of school kids around, teaching them about wild foods, and so yeah, it's taken me on some fun roads. And I imagine, yeah, and you use the word fun, which I think mm -hmm. is super important when you're talking about food or any sort of anything, but uh, connecting with, trying to, you know, figure out which foods you can eat also connects you to nature, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's one of the rewarding parts about it. It is. It's so rewarding. I feel like the app is like this treasure hunt. It's better than Pokemon Go because you yeah. actually like go home with something. Right. And so, yeah, it just kind of has this treasure hunt feel to it where you go out, you're on an adventure, and you have a whole story surrounding your experience of finding something or not finding something, you right. know, yeah. and that being okay too. Um, so, yeah, kind of learning to follow the lines of abundance. Exactly, yeah. You've been a resident of Hawaii for a while, and mm -hmm. me too, and it's a place I love. And I think what you're doing for Hawaii is an amazing thing. And also, one thing I talk about all the time is Hawaiian food independence. The importance mm -hmm. of, of, instead of us importing 80% of what we eat, um, we could have a lot of it that we grow and harvest and find in the wild right here on our in the island. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is that one of the reasons why you're, you're doing what you do? Or? It's interesting. It wasn't how I originally came into it, yeah. but I, um, without trying to bring fear in, I also, you know, am very aware of climactic changes, political instabilities. You know, all of these factors that. It really uh, stresses how important it is for us to, you know, have independence. And food is one of our absolute basic needs. And so when you learn some of these wild foods, you are able to release some of that fear that surrounds this unknown of where is my next meal coming from, or if that should happen, what would I do? And then, and then also, I think we talked a little bit about this, but the nutritional value of these wild foods. Yeah, I mean, the wild foods are truly outstanding. Um, they are growing in first of all they're kind of allowed to grow of their own free will okay. you know like they you know free will plants I mean I I have a, probably a different view on plants and as being sentient beings but the the plant is growing where it wants to it's not been planted provided nutrients and water it's um, therefore has a, a, a toughness to it. Yeah. It's, it's a survivor. Yeah. And so it's producing a different set of um, not only nutrients, so you know, testing definitely shows that wild foods, um, especially our wild greens, have a lot more nutrients than cultivated ones. Okay. But they're they're oftentimes a lot higher in like phytonutrients that you're not getting from cultivated things. Exactly. And they also are carrying information about how to adapt to the climactic conditions in your area as well as the pathogens. Mm -hmm. They're on the front lines dealing with the viruses and the fungi and the bacteria in the ecosystem of which you live. So, so you're getting that direct download of the front line survivors. So your immune system is like learning from these foods that you're Exactly. Around, that you know? genetic transfer, that information is happening 100% with through the plants that we eat. That's really something a lot of people don't understand about eating, but is really going on on a whole 
different level, mm -hmm. right? Um, cool, that's awesome. Is there anything yeah. else you want to tell us about this stuff before we get into the what you got here? Oh, well, I just feel like Hawaii is such a fabulous place to be a forager. We have so many different ecosystems. There's a lot of biodiversity. You know, you can have your desert to your ocean, jungle, mountaintop. So um, it can be a little overwhelming because there's so many different little ecosystems to learn. Yep. But um, at the same token, there's some great resources available for us and as well as all that beautiful accumulated Hawaiian wisdom. Exactly. I agree with you. And I, I do think people are really into local food in, mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And so I feel like we can just push that ball even more Yeah. when we're making beautiful things out of the stuff that's just growing everywhere. Yes. So, so you've been traveling to all the islands and, and you bring two suitcases full <laughs> of stuff that you have made yes. with the foods that you find. Yes. And they're the five invasives that you can find on your app. Mm -hmm. So... Tell us what you have here. The first one that we'll start with is Java plums. And they are, I personally think they're delicious fresh, but they're even better. They lose a lot of that astringency when they're dried. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you don't want to eat the, the seed okay. in the middle. Yeah. Um, mm. But you can just eat that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a really strong flavor. Wow. It's got the spiciness to it, the floral notes, little hints of astringency. It reminds me, of, I'm getting the um, flavor of the Suriname cherry. Mm -hmm. Have you got little, that before? It's totally resin, resiny seed. Yeah. That would be like a resin mm. kind of profile. I love I the Suriname cherry, so that's cool. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Um, and what else do you make with that besides? Mm. I love making shrubs, like drinking vinegars, okay. um, syrups that can be added to sauces, to cocktails and mocktails. I love making chutneys mm -hmm. with okay. this. Um, of course, it can be added to all kinds of different desserts. The color is phenomenal. You know, you have the purple um, outer skin and then with the inside, it just kind of turns this beautiful pink. Um, yeah. Of course, if you get it basic enough, you can go blue to the other side of the spectrum. But yeah, they're fun. And you can also use the leaves. Okay. Crushing the leaves and soaking them in cold water for several hours uh, actually makes a really nice drink that I feel has like some grapefruit flavors come out. Mm. Really fabulous for anybody who's pre-diabetic um, or otherwise trying to control blood, sh blood sugars. All right, what do you have next? Well, we've got some kahili ginger, yeah. and we use the rhizome, the new shoots, and the flowers on the kahili. Um, this here is the dried flowers, and I had a friend mm -hmm. tell me, oh, this should be like the uh, saffron of the, of the Pacific. Wow. Um, yeah, these are fun to garnish with. Of course, you could just add them into dishes as a rehydrated flour. Okay. Um, you could put them into cream sauces, you could put them into soups, you know, throw some on the on a miso at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's really pretty too. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful for garnishing. I mean, we even used them to garnish um, drinks, you know, cocktails and mocktail kind of things. Yep, um, that's cool. Yeah, and then I have with the rhizome um, some, this is basically like a sushi pickle, mm -hmm. and it has two-thirds of thinly sliced kahili ginger rhizome and one-third of just the regular kind of, you know, organic culinary ginger. Um, so that's fun. I think we should give it a try. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. Cool, it's um, mm. oh my gosh, you like it? Oh, it's really yeah, wow. <laughs> mm. I think it's got a lot, it has a lot more floral mm -hmm. going on than a culinary ginger, which has more spiciness. Yeah, um, mm, so this delicious. is floral and earthy. Oh man, yeah, it like. The flavor changed as I went through. Yeah. As I ate it, the flavor like was changing yeah. often, which yeah. I really like. Yeah, and I use the rhizome in other things. I'll be cooking curries, and I'll just kind of have a chunk like you would use galangal. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, you mentioned grapefruit before, because that's what I got at the end. I felt it's like kind oh, of interesting. Uh, that was the Java plum leaves. Oh, oh, I yeah. noticed that at um, the end of that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Grapefruit. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so then we also have the, the rhizome powdered. So taking the thin slices and then putting it in a dehydrator and powdering it. Mm -hmm. And then this is, you know, getting added to ginger snap cookies or different things. So you have so like a, little, a powdered ginger. It's a powdered ginger. What do I do? Should I just eat a little of this? Well, yeah, you know, be careful. It's like, you know, <laughs> concentrated powder. <laughs> so maybe um, just put a little on that. Yeah. You could garnish rims of glasses, oh, yeah. you know, put a, either a sugar or mm. a um, salt kind of combination or, you know, powders are fun. They can be added in all kinds of different things. Cool. Yeah. And then um, finally, I have the hydrosol. And you can mist this uh, as a spray just to kind of change your mood. Uh, this is kind of like aromatherapy. This is okay. distilled, not for the alcohol, but for the aromatherapy. Nice. You want to try, if you put your hand like that, I'll put it in your little puka of your hand and you could um, try it there. Oh, you smell it? <coughs> no, you can actually uh, ingest it. Oh, okay. I sent samples of this to France to be analyzed. Mm and it has high levels of linalool, okay. which is kind of what lavender is so famed for, giving mm. you the calming, yeah. peaceful kind of feelings. So this also has those same properties and effects on okay. the body. And through the testing, it didn't show that it had any, you know, kind of harmful substances. So really fun. Um, I use these in cocktails and mocktails. Um, you can you can also add this just to plain water. It'll flavor the whole drink. I can see that. Yeah. Um, you can just if you just want kind of that calming, peaceful kind of vibes. You can just drop it into your mouth. Yeah. Um, you can add it to different foods. You know, maybe you're making like a chia pudding, and you you know you put it on the top or something. So you're pioneering. This is pioneering, though, right? Yes. Nobody's taking kahili ginger and making it into this. That yet, is right? that is correct. You're this, a pioneer, really. Aren't you? This <laughs> occupies over sixty thousand acres in Hawaii. It's right, in the okay. um, the IUCN's list of top 100 most invasive species on the planet. Yes. That's species, so that includes rats, mosquitoes, viruses, okay. you know, in the top 100 most invasive. Wow. So doing something with these versus the general approach of spraying them full of pesticides is a powerful way of utilizing this medicine food. Yeah. You know, this isn't something where you're eating large quantities, but you're adding as a flavoring to, you know, like you would a galangal or something like that. Kind of think of it as more of a medicine food. Right, right, yeah. So, and the fresh flowers are wonderful. I use those in making onion jams and things like that. So you can, you can use those a little more liberally. And then over here uh, is some strawberry guava. Okay. And this occupies over 200,000 acres in Hawaii. I've seen it in many places. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is a very common one. So here I've just made it into a syrup, um, which of course you can use your culinary imagination yeah, yeah, um, yeah. to yeah, pop it open. Strawberry guava is wonderful in all kinds of desserts. It can be dehydrated as well. Um, we have three different species of strawberry guavas. Um, we have three species? Or, excuse me. We have three varieties, three varieties that are all the same species that um, you know, typically you think of the pink ones, pinkish red, mm -hmm. but there's also two other yellow varieties. Wow. That is so earthy. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. These are, all these are, that I've tasted so far, it's just a, com they're complex flavors, you know? Very complex flavors. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Both of these are, um, like mm. myrtle family, so they have a little bit of that resinous, yeah. um, you know, you have to kind of be a foodie to understand what the resiny thing, but will you just use that that lingo? Um, yeah, yeah. Because it just works. See that when you're putting these in things, it's making your dish, the complexity of your dish more. The yeah. Flavors, maybe richer, oh, I mean, deeper, you make yeah. like a barbecue sauce yeah. with that, oh, with some local venison or mouflon. Yeah, I mean, totally, yeah. it's phenomenal. Mm. It's really phenomenal. That's great. Now, 
to harvest this, what mm -hmm. did you do? I mean, how is it? It's easy to harvest or hard? Uh, yeah, it's it's you just pick the fruits okay. and then I um, will eat some fresh, uh, but I mostly will cook them. Yeah. Uh, I'll just put them into a pot, bring the water just up to a boil and then put them into like one of those nut milk bags that you make coconut milk out of yep. uh, and then let it drain uh, until it's cool enough to squeeze it all out. And then if you let that sit, you'll notice that you have kind of some pulpy material at the bottom and then you're just kind of more clear juice at the top. And of course you can either separate those or keep them together okay. and then use that as a base to either make a syrup, um, when I make the shrub, I just literally add sugar to the fresh fruit, let it sit for a day, then add the vinegar and let that sit for another day or two. Okay. So that you can do like a raw kind of preparation versus a cooked um, shrub. But there's all different ways of doing things, of course. Right, and right. we have so many talented chefs. That I'm really looking forward to seeing how people take these ingredients and you know, make them part of the cuisine of Hawaii because this is what's growing in abundance on you know on the aina here. Totally, and so. that's so important that it becomes part of the food uh, dialogue or food culture, right? Yeah. A lot, and a lot of, that's happened in Hawaii a lot where we've had like you know a lot of Asian food has become part of the Hawaiian food yeah. culture. Yeah. We should have food from here. Yeah. Making it into yeah. Hawaiian food culture. Yeah, and I think it would just be uh, special to note that we don't want to be spreading these. So okay. if you love them, don't bring the seeds home and put them in your home garden. Right. These are invasive. They're growing that are, fine. They're growing fine out there. They're right? growing fine out there. <laughs> they're they're actually modifying their habitat modifiers. They're right. changing the ecosystems. Yeah. And so we can do our part to eat them to help tame them down from taking over taking much over, yeah. larger part pieces. And don't worry, if we eat all these up, there'll be 10 more invasives that line up behind And that's what's the greatest, the bounty part, is yeah. that they're everywhere, they're growing wild, yeah. and by eating them, we're, trying, we're controlling them a little yeah. bit. Yeah, go more. have an adventure. Go yeah. out and have an adventure and come home with some super highly nutritious wild foods that are downloading your body with new genetic material suited for your ecosystem. And then use your app yes. to tell everybody else where they are, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Drop it becomes a community of foragers who are engaging with the app um, to share in the resources that are available. Great. Well, thank you so much. That My was, pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, but, um, looking forward to <laughs> using the app more and yeah. showing our viewers more about it. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Awesome. Allard. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thanks, Allard. Yeah. Yeah. It was really amazing to learn about and sample all these unique food products Sunny had made from these invasive wild plants. She was literally traveling around with a suitcase full of these things and we were going to go to a local restaurant to see if we could find a, a local mixologist who was interested in trying some of these magical ingredients in our drinks. We'd already covered a lot on this day. We had not found one of the five invasives to drop the first pin on Hawaii Island on Sunny's app. And then something interesting happened. On the way to the restaurant, Sunny saw a tree she absolutely recognized at one of our most popular beaches on the island. We're at Magic Speed, and we think we found a Java Plum, which would be the first pin on the Big Island. Let's go. with the tree? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to see how the app works? Yes. Yeah.
Okay, so we're gonna open this thing up and I'm gonna geolocate us just to drop right in where we are. And then I'm gonna hit the little button and I'm gonna select the plant. We've got a Java plum. Magic's, Magic's oh, magic. Java plum. Magic's Java. I'm calling it Magic's Java. Okay, and then I'm gonna add the photos. So I took <laughs> that one and that one and... Okay. And then I'm gonna add my pin location and I'm just gonna, again, use that little locator button. Confirm. And then we're gonna say, check, check it out. <laughs> First pin Woo -woo. dropped on Big Island oh. is Java Plum at Magic's. Yeah! Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Everybody's like, these people are tripping out on plants. <laughs> <laughs> Always. This is, um, this is actually a really important Kona spot. Right? Super important. That's, right? It's really interesting. It's yeah. community <laughs> hub. Look yeah. out for um, sea oh. grapes. Yeah. Oh, look out for sea grapes. Sea grapes and um, coconuts. Lola so then I'm just going to finish location. Oh, yeah. Ooh, first pin on the big island, yay! Good job, guys. Super interesting. It was a job. Those are big leaves. I can't wait to show you my little. There it is. For the final stop on this epic day, we would go to a local restaurant, Sam Choi's, and seek out a bartender who was willing to play with some of these invasive wild food products and put them in our drinks. And luck would have it, we found a bartender who was game. So I want to buy these three folks here a drink, um, and we've got a uh, bartender here. Tell me your name again. Ding. Yes, sir. All right. So Choice, who is game for this little challenge. Or something botanical to go with the times, like gin. Or... I don't, no alcohol for me. No alcohol so for you. Mocktail, please. Mocktail, no problem. Yeah, you're gonna be the one, right? <laughs> no. You're gonna be the one, right? I think he's in too. And as we watch Dane valiantly working to make up drinks from these unique ingredients, we celebrated the simple but revolutionary idea of turning something considered by many to be a weed, a nuisance, into food. Yeah. I think that's something that would like, oh. be a great use for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of sugar on that, strawberry. I just want to eat that part. <laughs> it's like really, really refreshing and fruity and tart at the same time. So that must be the, the Java Club. Yeah. That is good, yeah. And giving people technology to allow them to be less dependent on a fragile food system and more dependent on themselves, their own knowledge, creativity, and connection to nature is a great gift. And it's definitely living on the culinary edge. Drinking invasives here in Kona. With, this is so good. With Sunny yeah. Savage. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for watching. To find out more about what Sunny Savage is up to and download the Savage Kitchen app or sign up for her email list, go to sunnysavage.com. You can find out more about our show at theculinaryedgetv.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out when new videos get released. Thanks for watching.